Today we're going to have a very special public podcast and this is a student request coming from Mila uh, from Illinois who writes, Dear Mr. P, I was wondering if you could maybe post a video about how to convert frequency of radiation to examples of wavelengths. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a little uh, overview about doing such calculations. So one thing to know whenever trying to calculate, let's say, the, the, the frequency, right, the frequency of some kind of electromagnetic wave, it's pretty much it's important to be able to convert your wavelengths, right? So wavelength pretty much into, let's say, meter units. Right? And one of the reasons for that is because in order to find the frequency of wavelengths, right, we're going to use the following equation. And, and in some books, it'll be written down um, a little bit differently. So we're going to use the equation lambda v is equal to c, where lambda is pretty much our wavelength, right, the, the actual wavelength of whatever we're trying to find. And a lot of times if you're looking at wavelengths, especially for visible light, um, where they lie between 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers, um, we want to convert them to meters. And, and the reason for that is, well, we've got this C, right? And this C is a, a very important uh, universal physics constant. Uh, which is pretty much the speed of light in a vacuum. And that's uh, what we're um, going to be using. And that value of C is equivalent to 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Right? So we know that lambda um, is our wavelength. Right? And the reason for that is, well, look at the units in our C value. They're meters per second. Right? Our wavelength, lambda, might be in nanometers, might be in micrometers, might be in centimeters, right? Depending on what kind of wavelength, wave we're deciding where we're looking at. Could be in micrometers. Right? So what we want is, if you, we notice we've got units, length units, we've got a length per time unit, right? So we know that somehow these units are going to divide out with that, and it's going to leave you with per second, right? Per second, if we look at pretty much frequency, frequency is equal to one per some kind of time unit, right? And so frequency is typically in hertz, and hertz is equivalent to pretty much cycles per second. So how many cycles? So we're looking at, you know, let's say however many cycles we're going to go through every single second in time. So in other words, frequency, how many wavelengths will pass a fixed point at a given time? So now let's look at really what a wave is. So I'm going to draw a wave. All right. So here we have our wave. The top part of the wave here is referred to as the crest. This bottom part of the wave is referred to as the trough. Right? And so if we're looking at, right, let's see, use a different color here, from one point, let's say one crest to another, or from one trough to another, the distance here is our lambda, is our wavelength, so to speak. So now that we've um, kind of come across that, well, uh, or, you know, kind of looked at what waves are, let's look at these units. And as we said, we need to be able to convert these units into meters, right? So let's actually go through the very first question, or actually the only question that I've got posted. Calculate the frequency of radiation with a wavelength of 442 nanometers. So now, nanometers are really, really tiny units, 
right? So if we're going to look at these so-called tiny units, well, the next unit of measure from nanometers, right? So nanometers, let's uh, use a different color here. Nanometers, we're going to go to micrometers. So in one uh, micrometer is equivalent to 1,000 nanometers. So what we're going to want to do is convert um, using factor labeling um, 442 nanometers into micrometers. I like to do it in, in steps. So we're going to get the 442 nanometers. And when converting units, I, uh, I have a video on converting units. And what I state in when converting units is I always treat it as if um, I am multiplying by fractions. So I don't want nanometers. So for me to divide nanometers out, where in my fraction must nanometers appear? And nanometers, well, will have to appear at the bottom. And so nanometers here will cancel out. But what are we converting nanometers to? We're converting nanometers into micrometers. So which one of these two units is a bigger unit? Right? And the step that I use in that video uh, for converting units is we put the number one next to the two sets of units that is the biggest set of units. So micrometers are bigger than nanometers. In one micrometer we bought 1,000 nanometers. However, if we stop there, our units are in micrometers. And we don't want micrometers. We actually want meters. So to do that, to continue this, well, we want to divide out this micrometers. But to do that, we need to somehow divide out micrometers. So micrometers must appear here at the bottom. And what are we going to convert micrometers to? Well, we're going to mic convert micrometers into millimeters. And millimeters is bigger than micrometers, so we're going to put a 1 next to the bigger of the two units. And in 1 millimeter, 1 millimeter is equivalent to 1,000 micrometers. So if we continue with this, micrometers will divide out and our units are in millimeters. But we still don't want millimeters. And I know it's taking a long time, uh, but I'm going to just show you step by step. We don't want millimeters. So we want to divide out our millimeters. So millimeters, we're going to put at the bottom. We're going to convert millimeters now to centimeters, right? The bigger unit is centimeters between centimeters and millimeters. So what we're going to do is in one centimeter, we have 10 millimeters. So millimeters now will divide out. But our units are still not what we want them. We want them in meters. So sorry for probably going through all this, but I do want to go through this step because it kind of will, will foolproof um, you having to try to memorize, um, you know, exponent numbers um, to convert, let's say, micrometers or nanometers straight to meters. So that's one of the reasons why I'm taking my time to go through this step. So we're going to convert centimeters. We, we want to divide out centimeters as we've always wanted. right? And we're going to convert centimeters now into meters. And which is bigger, obviously, one meter. In one meter, there are 100 centimeters. So now, how do I go about doing the math for this? Well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything that's, well, I'm going to take this number that I start with and all the top set of units, and I'm going to multiply them all by one another. So the 42 times 1 times 1, it's not going to matter, but notice what the units that we have left with. They're, they will be in meters. So up at the top, I'm going to have 442 uh, meters divided by 1,000 multiplied by this 1,000 multiplied by this 10 multiplied by 100. And I'm going to get the following number at 442 
meters divided by one billion. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to divide 442 by 1 billion. And another way of writing out 1 billion, we don't really want to write 1 billion. We're actually going to write it down as 1 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 units. So in other words, right, what we've ultimately figured out this way is that, and, and again, this is where you, if you want, you can choose to do this big long step as I showed you, or you can try to memorize, right, that 1 times 10 to the power of 9 nanometers is equal to 1 meter. So 1 billion nanometers will fit in 1 meter in length. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this now, going back to the question, 442 divided by the, um, the 1 billion, right, or divided by 1 to the exponent, or 1 times 10 to the power of 9, to give us is 4.42 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. So that's really what 442 um, micrometers, or sorry, or nanometers that we've converted uh, become when we convert them into meters. Right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the, uh, the equation that uh, I introduced at the beginning. Lambda V is equal to C, where lambda is our wavelength. Right? And C is our speed of light constant. And it's this V that is really our frequency. Right? And our frequency pretty much um, is really 1 over T. Right? Or pretty much as we said before, pretty much Hertz is pretty much how many cycles per, um, per unit of time and, or per second. And that's really what we're trying to find. So we're going to isolate for this V. And V is going to be equivalent to C over lambda. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in that uh, speed of light constant, 3 times 10 to the power of 8 uh, meters per second, divided by our um, lambda, which is what we just calculated, 4.42 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. And make note of the following. We have meters here in the numerator. We've got meters here in this denominator. They're going to divide out. But be careful. Our units are not seconds. Our units are going to be cycles per second. Right? So these numbers, so there won't be a set of units. These are going to represent really how many cycles will this wavelength pass a given point every single second in time. So we're going to take our calculator, throw in our numbers, right? 3 um, times 10 to the power of 8, and we're going to divide it by 4.42 to the exponent of negative 7, and we're going to get the following answer for our frequency, 6.787 and a bunch of other numbers, times 10 to the power of 14 cycles per second in time. And if we want to look at significant digits, there are three significant digits in my question. So I'm going to want to make sure I have three significant digits in my answer. So we take the 6.78, we look at this 7, so our answer will work out to 6.79 times 10 to the power of 14 cycles per second. And that is going to be our frequency.